Dengue IgM Capture ELISA Introduction Dengue is a mosquito-borne viral disease and may cause a subclinical infection or a severe flu-like illness and could occasionally be fatal. Example, Dengue Hemorrhagic Fever or Dengue Shock Syndrome. Dengue is transmitted by several species of mosquito within the genus Aedes, principally Aedes aegypti. Principle of assay IgM antibodies in the patient's serum are captured by anti-human IgM coated onto the solid surface wells. In the next step, dengue antigen is added which binds to captured human IgM in the sample. Unbound antigen is removed during the washing step. In the subsequent step, anti-dengue monoclonal antibodies added followed by avidine histidine rich protein. Subsequently, chromogenic substrate is added and the reaction is stopped by sulfuric acid. The intensity of color or optical density is measured at 450 nanometers. Reagents provided in each kit. The Dengue IgM ELISA kit used in this demonstration contains the following. Anti-human IgM coated wells. These are ready to use. 12 strips with 8 wells each are coated with anti-human IgM antibodies. This is stable at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade if protected from moisture. Sample diluent for dengue IgM, ready to use. Phosphate buffered saline with additives and antibiotics for dilution of test samples. Wash buffer concentrate. Before use, dilute wash buffer concentrate 1 in 19, that is, one part of buffer concentrate and 19 parts of high-grade distilled water. For assay of 8 samples, that is, 6 clinical samples and 2 controls, 100 milliliters of diluted wash buffer is sufficient. Dengue antigen, ready to use. Anti-dengue monoclonal antibody, ready to use. Avidin HRP. Ready to use. Protect the solution from direct exposure to light. Liquid TMB substrate. Ready to use. Protect this from light. Stop solution. Ready to use. This solution contains one normal sulfuric acid. Wear protective gloves, mask and eyeglasses while handling stop solution. Dengue IgM positive control, ready to use. Dengue IgM negative control, ready to use. This will help to monitor the integrity of the test kit. Storage conditions. It is essential that all reagents and material is stored at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. Do not freeze any of the reagents. Do not bring or equilibrate any of the reagents to room temperature even on the day of performing the test. Anti-human IgM coated test strips must be protected from moisture. The unused strips should be placed safely in self-sealing pouch with desiccant. Additional material required. Microplate washer. Microplate reader with 450 nanometers filter. Incubator at 37 degrees centigrade. Adjustable micropipette with disposable tips. High-grade glass distilled water. Tissue paper or aluminium foil. Glass tubes for dilution of sample. Timer. Preparation of reagents before performing test. Dilute wash buffer concentrate by mixing one part of wash buffer concentrate with 19 parts of high-grade glass distilled water. For assay of 8 samples, that is, 6 clinical samples and 2 controls, 100 milliliters of diluted wash buffer is sufficient. The unused diluted wash buffer can be stored in a refrigerator for 2 months or until it shows microbial growth. Remove the anti-human IgM coated strip as per the number of samples to be tested and fix it on the strip holder. The unused strip must be sealed immediately with the film and kept in the aluminium pouch.
the unused strips must be protected from moisture. At the time of addition, take the reagents from the refrigerator. Add required quantity of the reagent to the wells and keep the vial back into the refrigerator. Do not bring any of the reagents to room temperature. This may lower the shelf life of the kit. After washing the strips, the next reagents must be added immediately before the wells become dry. Dried wells may give erroneous results. Test Protocol Thoroughly mix all the reagents using the micropipet tips before addition. The test procedure must be followed meticulously. Don't bring any of the kit reagents to room temperature before commencing the test. All reagents are stable at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade and for in vitro use only. Procedure Select the samples to be assayed. Write down the protocol on ELISA's sheet provided with each kit. Dilute serum 1 in 100 in tubes or preferably in deep well plate using sample diluent for dengue IgM. Remove required number of anti-IgM coated strips. Number the test strips as 1, 2, 3 and so on. Wash the strips 3 times with wash buffer. Do not allow the wells to dry. Transfer 50 microliters of diluted samples from the deep well plate to respective wells using multi-channel pipette. Add 50 microliters of dengue IgM positive control and dengue IgM negative control to respective wells as per the protocol. Cover the plate with aluminium foil to prevent evaporation of samples. Keep the plate in a closed humidified box inside the incubator and incubate the plate at 37 degrees centigrade for one hour. In our demonstration, the ELISA washer has an inbuilt chamber for incubation. Use timer for accurate incubation period. At the end of incubation, wash the plate five times with wash buffer. Tap the plate after last wash on a tissue paper to remove traces of wash buffer content. Add 50 microliters of dengue antigen to each well of the plate. Cover the plate with aluminium foil to prevent evaporation of samples and incubate for one hour at 37 degrees centigrade. At the end of incubation, wash the plate five times with wash buffer. Tap the plate after last wash on a tissue paper to remove traces of wash buffer content, add 50 microliters of anti-dengue monoclonal antibody to each well. Cover the plate with aluminium foil to prevent evaporation of samples and incubate for one hour at 37 degrees centigrade. At the end of incubation, wash the plate five times with wash buffer. Tap the plate after last wash on a tissue paper to remove traces of wash buffer content. Add 50 microliters of Avidine HRP to each well. Cover the plate with aluminium foil to prevent evaporation of samples and incubate for 30 minutes at 37 degrees centigrade. At the end of incubation, wash the plate five times with wash buffer. Tap the plate after last wash on a tissue paper to remove traces of wash buffer content. Add 100 microliters of liquid TMB substrate to each well. Incubate at room temperature in dark for 10 minutes. Stop the reaction exactly after 10 minutes with 100 microliters of stop solution. Measure the absorbance at 450 nanometers within 10 minutes after termination of reaction. Quality control. Each kit contains one vial of positive control and one vial of negative control. These work as markers of kit performance. For the kit used in this demonstration, if optical density of negative control is more than 0.18 or if optical density of the positive control 
is less than six times the optical density of negative control. Then, in both these situations, the test should be considered as invalid. Follow instructions on the kit insert of your kit diligently. In addition to the controls in the kit, it is recommended to include an in-house or a third-party control of known optical density or cut-off value for quality control purposes. The in-house controls can be prepared from pooled test kit controls or made from pooled sera of dengue IgM positive or negative individuals in each laboratory. In addition, a laboratory should also enroll in a regular EQUAS program with a reference laboratory. Interpretation of results Follow the instructions to read the samples as negative or positive as given on the kit insert of the kit that you use. The kit used in this demonstration uses the following interpretations. If optical density value of sample tested is less than optical density of negative control by a factor 2, that is, sample OD is less than negative OD multiplied by 2, the sample should be considered as negative. If optical density value of sample tested exceeds optical density of negative control by a factor 3, that is, sample OD is greater than negative control OD multiplied by 3, the sample should be considered as positive. If OD value of sample tested exceeds OD of negative control by a factor 2, that is, sample OD is greater than negative control OD multiplied by 2, but is less than OD of negative control by a factor 3, that is, sample OD is less than negative control OD multiplied by 3, the sample should be considered as equivocal. Dengue IgM negative sample is a sample that does not contain detectable levels of dengue IgM and indicates no recent dengue virus infection. But, if the clinical symptoms still suggest possible role of dengue virus, the sample should be subjected to dengue NS1 antigen detection, virus isolation or genome detection or immunofluorescence studies to show presence of dengue viral antigen. Dengue IgM positive sample is a sample that contains detectable levels of dengue IgM and is interpreted as presumptive dengue infection or a probable case of dengue. Since serological cross-reactivity among the flavivirus group is common, role of other flaviviruses like West Nile and Japanese encephalitis serotypes circulating in the geographic areas must be ruled out. The results must be confirmed by PRNT or fourfold rise in IgG titers of paired sample or follow the guidelines laid down by WHO from time to time. Dengue IgM equivocal sample indicates that a second sample collected 8 to 10 days after the first sample should be tested for dengue IgM or, or else by an alternate method of testing should be adopted. Precautions for consistent or accurate test results. Read the kit insert thoroughly before carrying out the test. Do not use kit reagents after expiry. Do not use reagents from a different batch number. Do not freeze any of the reagents. On the day of performing a test, do not bring the reagents to room temperature. Avoid exposure of kit reagents to direct sunlight or higher temperature than recommended storage temperature. Use protective clothing, hand gloves, glasses while performing the assay. Avoid mouth pipetting. If any of the reagents show precipitation, mix it by repeated pipetting. Use Disposable absorbent paper or filter paper to cover the working table. Avoid microbial contamination 
of any of the reagents or cross-contamination of different reagents. Do not use heat inactivated or frozen and thawed sera sample. Incomplete washing may adversely affect the results of the assay. Poor quality distilled water can lead to erroneous results. After washing the wells, add the next reagent immediately as per the protocol. Do not allow the wells to dry. The sera CSF being tested for presence of dengue IgM antibodies are from unknown patients and could be infectious. Handle all samples and the unused kit reagents as infectious. Follow standard guidelines for handling and disposal. Biosafety norms of your institute or medical college must be strictly followed. Avoid contact of skin, mucous membrane and eyes with any of the reagents. Disposal of unused or expired kit. All the expired kits and reagents are to be decontaminated by autoclaving at 121 degrees centigrade and 15 pounds pressure for 20 minutes. And subsequent disposal of decontaminated material as per local institutional or municipal guidelines. Record keeping. Maintain a logbook for recording of the laboratory specimens. The information contained in the logbook should be kept confidential. A worksheet containing the identification numbers of CIRA to be tested must be prepared each time before the test is performed. Daily records of temperatures of water baths, refrigerators and freezers should be maintained. Micropipettes should be calibrated, ideally every three months or at least biannually. ELISA readers should be calibrated to ensure accuracy of the readings. Maintain a file where all procedures and package inserts are kept for ready reference. Numbers of ELISA positive samples being reported from various high-risk groups 